Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 5, Lesson 3, Construct Linear Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to write linear functions from graphs, tables, and verbal descriptions by finding the rate of change and initial value. Let's learn rate of change and initial value. A linear function is a function that has an equation in the form of y equals mx or y equals mx plus b. We saw both of these in module 4 with direct variation and slope intercept form. The graph of a linear function forms a straight line. And to help remember this, linear has the word line in it. It's a straight line. The slope, m, of a linear function is also known as the rate of change. The rate of change between any two points in a linear relationship is the same or constant. So if we look anywhere on this line, our rate of change is 1 half. We have a ratio from our rise to our run of 1 over 2. No matter where we look, it's the same. And again, we saw this a lot in module 4. The y-intercept, which is b of our linear function, is going to be our initial value. Essentially, where is our function starting? The initial value is the corresponding y-value when x equals 0. So there's our y-intercept, or our initial value, when x is equal to zero, what is that point at? Take time to pause and reflect. How does this compare to what you've previously learned about proportional and non-proportional relationships? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Let's learn. Construct linear functions from graphs. You can construct a linear function from a graph by determining the rate of change or slope, which was m, and the initial value or y-intercept, which is b and then writing it in the form y equals mx plus b, that's our slope-intercept form. So we really only need to find m and b, y and x are part of the formula as it is. So here we can see the steps to construct a linear function from the graph that's shown. First, let's find our slope or rate of change with our ratio of our rise over our run. So this one, it went up 300 and over 4. If you're not given points on the line like we are here, choose places where the line goes through the corners of the coordinate grid nicely. Those values will be easier to work with. So up 300 over 4, if we divide this out to figure out the unit rate or rate of change, how much is it per month, that would be $75 in one month. So our rate of change would be 75. Then we want to find our initial value, which is where it's on the y-axis when x equals 0, it initially cost $100. Then we can take those two things and plug them into our equation for our linear function. Our rate of change was our m, so 75, and our initial value was 100. Our full equation would be y equals 75x plus 100. Example 1. Construct linear functions from graphs. A shoe store offers free points when you sign up for the rewards card. Then, for each pair of shoes purchased, you can earn an additional number of points. The graph shows the total points earned for several pairs of shoes. Find and interpret the rate of change and the initial value. Then, write the equation of the function in the form y equals mx plus b. So first in part a, let's find and interpret our rate of change. So we can see in the graph, we have a point here and a point here. The dashed line, remember, means that the values in between don't really work out so well. We could have a point right here at three since we're allowed to buy three pairs of shoes, but we wouldn't be able to buy 2.5 in the middle there. So if we find our rate of change, we can use our ratio of our rise over our run since we have a graph. So this went up 30 for two pairs of shoes. We can see here they chose to do it by subtracting the coordinates. The point total changed from 60 to 90, so subtracting, it went up 30, when two more pairs of shoes were bought. This means, if we reduce that fraction, that it's 15 points for one pair of shoes. So the rate of change for this graph is 15. This is the number of points that you earn per pair of shoes. Next, let's find and interpret the initial value. So our initial value, if we have our graph, would cross at 30. That's when x equals 0. So the initial value would be y equals 30. This means that when they open the card, the initial points earned was 30. Now we can take these two things, plug them into y equals mx plus b. 
our rate of change, our m, was 15. Our initial value was 30. So our equation would be y equals 15x plus 30. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer each part. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answers. First, in part A, we want the rate of change. This went up $50 for two more hours. So $50 change in the cost for two hours. We have $25 per hour. That's our rate of change. Where is it crossing? If each hour is 25, this was 100, we can go back one hour. It must be $25 less. So the initial value would be 75. Plugging these two things in, we have our rate of change at 25 and our initial value at 75. So y equals 25x plus 75. Let's learn. Construct linear functions from tables. To construct a linear function from a table of values, you need to determine the rate of change and initial value, just like we did with a graph. Then we're going to write it in the same form, y equals mx plus b. Here we have the table showing the relationship between the amusement park membership for months and the total cost. Here's how to figure it out from a table. So first, let's find the rate of change. We're going to see how much the total cost changes, that's our y value, for every month that it goes. Here we're giving it one step at a time. It went up $15 for one more month. So if we then divide those changes, we find that it's $15 per month. Even if we had skipped farther down, this total went up 30 in two months. 30 divided by two is still $15 per month. So for these linear functions, your rate of change should be constant no matter which values you choose, as long as you're finding, as long as you're using the same rows in the table. Next, let's find our initial value. So we can use slope intercept form to find our y intercept. To do this, plug in your rate of change and choose one of the coordinates from here. So they're choosing this point right here, 1 and 35. They plugged in 1 and 35. If it was only one month, it would have cost $15. $15 plus the initial value now gives a total of 35. So what does the initial value have to be? Subtract 15. Your initial value must have been $20. Then you can also find that by kind of working yourself backward in your table. If you're pretty close to zero for your x values, so here we're at one, zero is only one month before that, we can just go backwards 15. So if I went the opposite, then my initial value I know would be 15 less, so 20. It's up to you how you want to figure out the initial value, but remember it's when it is zero for x. So last, let's write our equation. We know that our rate of change was 15 and our initial value is 20, so our equation for our linear function would be y equals 15x plus 20. Example 2. Construct linear functions from tables. The table shows how much money Ava has saved. Assume the relationship between the two quantities is linear. Find and interpret the rate of change and the initial value. Then write the equation of the function in the form y equals mx plus b. So first it's important to note that it is a linear relationship, which means that as the number of months goes up, her money saved should be going up by the same amount each time. So first, as we've been doing, let's find our rate of change. We can choose two points in the table here. How does it go from 110 to 130? And then how does it go from three to four? So from 110 to 130, it went up 20. Four to three, it went up one month, which means she saved $20 each month. This went up 20 and one month. Again, if we chose different values, in two months she saved $40. That still is a unit rate of $20 per month. Next, let's find and interpret the initial value. So here, three, it's sort of close to zero, but in order to work our way backwards, we'd have to find two and one and zero. Not impossible, but it's becoming a little more difficult. 
So let's use our slope intercept form. We know that our rate of change, she's saving $20 per month. We know that after three months, she has saved $110. If she saved $20 a month for three months, that means she saved $60, but her total is 110. So what must she have started with? If we take away that 60, she must have started at $50. So B or our Y intercept is 50, meaning Ava initially saved $50. If we wanted to follow our pattern backwards, we know our rate of change is 20, so $20 less than this is 90, $20 less again is 70, $20 less again is 50. We could work our pattern backwards, and 20 is not too difficult to figure out, but it's just as easy to plug in and solve for b. Last, let's write our equation in the form y equals mx plus b. The rate of change was 20, the initial value is 50. So the function must be y equals 20x plus 50. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the table to answer each part. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. So in part A, the rate of change was 15. We can see that it goes up $15 for one more gigabyte of data. What is our initial value? So here I'm just gonna work backwards. Two is pretty close to zero. If two was 50 and it's going up 15 each time, then one must be 15 less. I just subtracted 15. Zero must be 15 less again, so 20. Then if I wanna write my equation in y equals mx plus b, I plug in my rate of change and my y-intercept is 20, so y equals 15x plus 20. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you make any errors when completing the check exercise? What can you do to make sure you don't repeat that error in the future? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Let's learn. Construct linear functions from verbal descriptions. As we've been doing, you can write the equation of a function in y equals mx plus b by figuring out the rate of change and the initial value, this time from a description of the relationship. When we're reading a verbal description, the rate of change is going to be usually accompanied by the word per or each, or you might need to figure out how much one thing is. You need to think about what is causing the total to keep going up each time, and by how much. The initial value, or b, which is your y-intercept, you need to think about in a verbal description, where does the context start? Or what is happening when you have zero of your thing for x? So here, let's see our steps to construct a linear function for a real-world situation. A skiing instructor charges an initial fee plus $30 per hour for lessons. Tasha paid $205 for six hours of instruction. So here we're given a price per hour and a total for so many hours, but we don't know the initial fee. It just says that they charge one. So first, let's find our rate of change. Well, it tells us that the instructor charges $30 per hour. That's our rate of change. It's how much for each hour. If we wanna find the initial value, we need to use the other information that was given to us. It told us that six hours was $205. So we can take that other information along with our rate of change. We can plug it in. And just like we did with our graphs and tables, we can solve for B. So if the total was 205 and she paid $30 per hour for six hours, that means her hourly total was 280. What is left to get to 205? That would be 25. That is our initial value. Plug those two things in. It was $30 per hour starting at 25. So Y equals 30X plus 25. Example three, construct linear functions from verbal descriptions. Joan plans to add 12 photos to her photo album each week. After eight weeks, there are 120 photos in the album. Assume the relationship is linear. Find and interpret the rate of change and initial value, then write the equation of the function in the form y equals mx plus b, where x represents the number of weeks and y represents the total number of photos. So our end goal is to write in y equals mx plus b, we need the rate of change and our initial value. First, as we've been doing, let's find the rate of change. 
it says she's going to add 12 photos to the album each week. So if we think about what's happening, wherever she started with, she's going to add 12. Then the next week, she's going to add 12 again, add 12 again. That is what's changing each time is the number of photos. By how much? It's 12. It's going up by 12 each week. So our rate of change would be 12. Next, let's find the initial value. So how many photos did she start with? We know it's going up by 12 each time. What other information were we given? We were given that at eight weeks, she had a total of 120 photos in the album. If she was doing 12 photos a week for eight weeks, how many photos did she add to the album? Eight times 12 is 96. So she started with a certain amount, added 96 more. Now she has 120. What did she start with? Subtract 96, we get 24. This means the initial value is 24. So the number of photos that Joan started with is 24. Last, writing it as our equation, it would be y equals 12x plus 24. Started at 24 and went up by 12 each time. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer each part. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. In part A for the rate of change, it is growing 2.5 inches per day. This one's a little bit more difficult to figure out. It says the second day it was at 8, but the seventh day it was at 20.5, which means in five days, the height went up 12.5. So if we divide 12.5 by 5, that's where we get our 2.5. What is our initial value? If it's going up 2.5 inches per day, let's plug it in. Y equals 2.5x plus B. We want to figure out that initial value. We know that on day two, it was eight. So eight is the height, 2.5 times two. And still plus B. I picked the two to use with the eight instead of the seven because two times 2.5 is just five. Whereas if I picked seven and 20.5, now I'm dealing with a decimal throughout the problem instead of eliminating it right away. Five plus what initial value would give me eight? B must be three. So plugging these in, rate of change is 2.5, initial value is three, y equals 2.5x plus three.